text or objects with a reflection create a really cool look, which seems to be all the rage these days. The best part about it is, it's not that hard to do. A matter of fact, it's real easy to do. So here we are in Motion 4. If you are in Motion 3, be sure to close out this tutorial and watch the Reflections for Motion 3 tutorial. Since Reflections is one of the new features of Motion 4, this tutorial will be different than the Reflections for Motion 3 webisode. I'm doing a Motion 3 and 4 version of this tutorial because that's how my Moving with Motion training DVD works. Today we are going to be working with this clip of the Cascade Range that is included as one of the five free, royalty-free clips in my new Moving with Motion training DVD. To get started, choose the HDV 1080i 60 preset. Hit the Return key. Hit the Shift and Z keys so we can do a fit in window. Next, hit the Command N1 keys to open up the File Browser tab. Select the Mountains clip and hit the Import button. Let's decrease the size of the clip to make room for the reflection. Grab the corner of the clip and drag the cursor to shrink it. Hold down the Shift key to contain the aspect ratio and then hold down the Option key to keep the clip in the center. 60% looks good. Move it up just a little so we have enough room for the reflection. Make sure you hold down the Shift key so the clip doesn't move to the left or right. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. You'll notice that there is no Reflections option. Click on the new camera icon and reselect the Mountains clip. Check that out. We now have a Reflections option. If you check the Reflections checkbox, you can see that nothing is happening. Well, that is because, just like in real life, a reflection is bouncing off of a nearby surface. So, let's add our own surface. But first, uncheck the Reflections checkbox. Click on the Rectangle Shape tool, and then create a rectangle. Change its X rotation 90 degrees, and move the shape up so the mountain clip is sitting on top of our shape. You can increase the size of the shape like so. Make sure the rectangle layer is selected. You'll know if you have it selected if you have a box around the object like so. OK, let's hit the Shift and Z keys to do a fit to fill again. Check the Reflections checkbox. And look at that, we have a reflection. If you move the shape up or down, you can get it closer or further away from our clip. Let's adjust our reflection even more by gaining additional controls by clicking on the Reflections Disclosure Triangle. If you adjust the Reflectivity slider, you can see that it affects the reflection's shininess. Zero shows no reflectivity, while 100% is like a mirror. Undo that and get it back to 80. Next is the blur amount, and it does just what you think it would. One looks perfect. We have additional options here. Check the fall off checkbox. Our first slider is the begin distance slider. This dictates where the fall off begins inside the reflection. If you crank it up all the way, you don't have a fall off. Whereas if you crank the slider back down to zero, we have a fall off within the reflection. And distance determines the distance where the fall off ends. If I crank the slider down, you can see what I mean. Undo that so we get back to 500. Next, we have exponent. This slider acts like the spread control does for gradients. I think 4 has a nice look. And of course, blend modes can help give us different types of looks. I'll just set that back. Let's change the shape color to black by hitting the F4 key. Click on the color well and select black. If you move the camera around, everything lines up well. Creating a reflection in Motion 4 is easy. Plus, if you add more clips or whatever, they'll create a reflection on the surface we created as well. However, this new feature does have a drawback. It can really slow down motion if you start piling on objects that have a reflection. 
If that is the case, you can temporarily shut off the reflections by going up to Render and selecting Reflections. To get the reflections back, just repeat the process or hit the Control, Option, and R keys. I'd say that looks great. What a cool new feature. No, no, no. I mean, this is so cool, it's as cool as eating a big Thanksgiving dinner. And that's not the coolest part of the story. The American president pardons a turkey from being eaten every Thanksgiving. That turkey then hitches a ride to Disneyland and gets to live next to the big Thunder Mountain. No joke, seriously, I'm being serious. That is one lucky bird. So we got creating reflections down. How about we kick this technique up a notch and manipulate our reflections like so. Go to the Library tab, Content, Template Media, and double click on the Fire folder. You may notice some of this fire from the Fire templates. The one I'm after is the firecrawl.mov. Select it and check out our preview. Perfect. Click on the Apply button. Next, we want our mountain clip to take on the characteristics of the fire. To do this, go back to the library. Go up to Filters, Distortion, which is what I want to do with the clip, and then select Displace. Drag it over to the mountain's clip. Hit F3 to open up the Filters tab so we can work with the filters we just added. We want the fire clip to displace the mountains clip, so drag the fire crawl movie over to the map image well. Hide the fire crawl clip. If you scrub a minute down the mini timeline, you can see that our fire is affecting the whole clip. Look, it's affecting the edges, but if you re enable the fire clip, it's not completely covering up the mountains clip and should only be affecting this portion of the mountains clip. The reason for this is, is because the fire clip that we placed in the map image well affects the whole clip. For example, shrink the fire crawl scale and move it to the bottom of the screen. Notice how the distortion in the mountains clip did not change one bit. In most cases, this works perfectly because your clip engulfs the whole screen anyways. Because our clip is half the size of the screen with a reflection, we will need to create some workaround to achieve the desired results. In order to get the displace filter to affect the whole region around it, we need to place the mountain clip in a group. Right click on it and choose Group. Move the displace filter in between the group and the mountains. Make the new group 2D, and now the reflection functions normally again, but we still have not fixed our problem. Notice that the size of the group is still the same size as the mountain's clip. Make sure the new group is selected and hit the F4 key to open up the group tab. Check the fixed resolution checkbox. Check that out. Notice that the size of the group is now the size of our working area, which is 1440 by 1080. The fire now distorts the clip outside of the mountain's clip boundaries. Part of the problem is that we only want the distortion to affect the reflection. However, if we hide the mountain's clip, we don't have anything to reflect. Check this out. Select our newest group. A matter of fact, let's call it Mountains Group, so things stay organized. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab. In the Blending section, we have a Cast Reflections option. Change it from Yes to Reflections Only. Now we only have a distorted reflection. Select the mountain's clip and hit the Command and D keys to duplicate it. Drag the duplicate above our mountain's group. Notice that the duplicate mountain clip is casting a reflection. Change its Cast Reflection option to No. If you scrub around, you can see that the Displace filter is doing a great job. Now it's time for the final touches. Let's add some fire that will distort the reflection. Select the Fire Crawl clip and hit the Command and D keys to duplicate it. Drag it below all of our groups and make sure that the Position Indicator, which is this line that just appeared below our groups, is fully extended to the left. This will make it so our new clip is outside of the group above it. If the Position Indicator is not fully extended, it will go inside our Mountains group. 
so make sure it's fully extended. And notice that we have a new group. Select our newest fire crawl clip and increase its scale to around 240%, so it touches the left and right side of the screen. We need to do this because this clip is SD and our working area is HD. Make sure it's centered. To keep things somewhat organized, call our new group Fire and make it 2D. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab and make it so its cast reflection is set to No. The black rectangle is making it so we can't see the fire. Select the rectangle and change its blend mode to Add and that eliminates the black in the reflection. Hide the fire crawl layer and there we go. Of course, our fire is going the wrong way. So, let's rotate the fire crawl copies clips X rotation 180 degrees. Move its Y position so it's barely below the mountain's clip. Negative 930 looks good. If you scrub to the very beginning of the timeline, you can see that our distortion and newly placed fire don't quite line up. We could try to move the disabled fire crawl clip around, but it won't do any good. Remember, the image placed in the Displace Filters Map image well takes on the whole clip, or in our case, the whole group. The last workaround of the day caused by our unique situation is to place the fire clip in a group as well. Select the fire crawl clip and right click on it. Choose Group. Remember, the group takes on the size of the object in it. Make it a 2D group and check the Fixed Resolution checkbox. Make sure the fire crawl clip is re enabled. Our group is not centered because we moved the fire crawl clip around. Hit F1 to open up the Properties tab and center the group. Let's call this group Fire Crawl. Help. Select the Displace Filter. Hit F3 to open up the Filters tab and drag our new group into the map image well. We can't see any distortion in the reflection anymore because the fire crawl clip is this little itty bitty guy and needs to be the size of the group. Remember, around 240 for the scale is what we did last time. Drag the fire crawl clip up so it's on the original mountains clip, which we can't see because we made the mountains group show the reflection only. Land the playhead at the start of the timeline. I'm doing this because I think it is easier to see what I'm doing with the fire small. Get the fire crawl clip up to about 500 or so for the Y position. Hide the fire crawl help group so this big fire clip is not in the way. Select the Displace Filter and hit F3. Move the horizontal and vertical scale sliders and notice how you can exaggerate the distortion. If you scrub around, you can see that the fire is perfectly distorting the reflection. As a matter of fact, hit the Home key to get to the start of the project. Hit the space bar and play the project. Notice how the clip edge is now affected by the fire. It was not doing that earlier. Once again, this is because the Displace filter is affecting a group as opposed to the clip itself. Another fun effect is to disable the fire group, and it's almost like the mountain's clip is hovering over some water or something. You can also add a Gaussian blur to the fire crawl help group, which will make the effect look even smoother depending on the amount you choose. Well, it's been fun. This has been Steven Smith with yet another motion training tutorial. Have fun adding reflections to your next project.